Hi everybody, I am Beatrice by name and you're welcome to the Health Monitor Show. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about body care and then we are going to be going through air growth circles today. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about the four stages of your air circle growth. And the four stages are the anogene, the cartogen, the telogen, and the exogen. The first stage is the anogen stage. And um, this is the stage where your hair grows. And it's the only phase where the hair root is receiving nutrition from blood supply on your, in your scalp. The hair spends most of its time in this stage. The cartogen stage is a transitional phase where your hair builds slowly and starts to pull away from the blood supply. So after the cartogen phase, we have telogen, which is another resting phase. And um, during this phase, the air receives no nourishment from blood vessels in the scalp and the air prepares to fall. And the last phase is the exogen phase where the hair begins to shed and fall from the follicle. So I hope from this explanation about the anagen, the cartogen, the telogen and the exogen phase, you can imagine what your air circle goes through how your hair grows from the roots receiving nutrients from blood supply on your scalp and then it goes through all the phase until the exogen phase i'll be right back welcome back so like i mentioned earlier i mentioned the four stages of the hair growth circle the anagen the cartogen the telogen and the exogen so the anagen phase is the longest hair growth circle phase so now the anagen phase is a phase process that happens for years before the cartogen the telogen and the exogen phase the anagen and the cartogen phase are the most important phase because they are the phases where we focus a lot of energy on because they are the growing phase before you get to the telogen and the exogen phase which are the shedding phase where the air begins to shed during the energy phase the air is actively growing and it grows about half an inch per month and this process can last from two to ten years but the average is four to six years so for some people their their hair keep growing from two to ten years they still have their hair growing in length for 10 years while for some people their hair growth their hair keeps growing from two to four years so people that have their hair that have hair retention growth for close to 10 years they have longer hair than people that have um whose hair grow on an average of two to four years this is to explain to you that the fact that your hair does not have length or your hair is not so long it doesn't mean your hair is not healthy and then we are going to get to talk about how that your hormone your environment and your diet affect your hair growth later on the average monthly hair growth rate is about half an inch so since it's an average monthly hair growth it means some people will have their hair grow up to half an inch why some people will have their hair grow less than half an inch in a month and of course since it's an since it's average some people will have more hair while some other people will have less hair growth so this is to say that you can't compare your hair growth with somebody else's hair growth because some people have their hair grow up to half an inch in a month and some people have their hair grow less than in fact way below half an inch in a month so I hope that you understand now that air growth rates vary from person to person and as much as you can't compare your air growth to somebody else's air growth, the same way each air strands on the hair has different rate growths. And what I mean is you can find a strand of the hair long and the other air strand short because they have different growth rates individually. So also in the human body, the air growth rate is different. You can't compare the air growth rate on your hair with the air growth rate on your brow and your lashes and all the private parts of the body. So now I'm going to explain to you now why different body parts air growths are different. The average energy air growth on the scalp lasts from 2 to 10 years. 
So you see why you can have a longer hair on your scalp. And then the average anagen hair growth phase on your brows, your lashes, or any other part of your body is from three to six months. And then it begins to shed. When your the hair growth phase, the energy hair growth phase on your hair, on your scalp lasts for as long as two to ten years. And the energy hair growth phase on your brows, your lashes, or other parts of the body lasts from um from two months to six months you see the difference between two years to ten years and two months to three months you can't expect that you have the same hair length on your scalp and the same hair length on your brows or other parts of your body because the energy phase are different i need to let you understand this that even though you have millions of air on your scalp each air grows independently so one air scalp can be one air strand can be on its anagen phase while another air strand it's on its exogen phase and then it is falling off another thing that affects our air growth circle is our hormones and gene and i'm going to explain that to you now so our genes are mostly an important role in ld hair growth so our hormones work within genetic limits and are affected by the environment around us you know age and even the products we use can affect our hormones. The food we eat can affect our hormones. And I'm going to make a good example of um, hormones affecting our air growth. And the example I'm going to use is this. For instance, during pregnancy, most women, their air grows through an anagen phase, which is the growing phase. And after childbirth, their hair grow through the exogen phase, which is the shedding phase. And then they realize that their hair pulls they have they lose a lot of air after childbirth so that is an example of hormone affecting air growth so another example i'm going to give on how hormones affect our hair growth is um, during puberty for a child that is growing up so during puberty they begin to experience air growth in areas where um, there was no hair and then they begin to see the difference how that air begins to grow in their pubic areas and all of that so now you can see how that our hormones is something that you really cannot control in growing your hair. However, we can focus on other things that we can do right to make our hair grow, which is our diet and the products that we use on our hair. Since we can't control our hormones and our gene, it is important that we focus on things that we can promote to maintain a longer hair and a healthy hair as well. So it is important that you take LD balanced diet and you buy the right products for your hair. I hope I've been able to educate you on the four stages of your hair growth and what you can do to retain a healthy hair. Thank you.